Ted and I are going to talk about how the media reports on debt. And we're going to do it starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. So today is, we're recording this on Wednesday, April the 14th, 14th 2021. So the way this show normally works, uh, we have topics that we want to discuss. Right. And we do a bunch of research on them and we come up with, a, you know, cue cards and, a, you know, talking points. And we come in here and you and I take a quick look at them. And I mean, they're just points. We don't really right. follow them too much. So I got up this morning clearly on the wrong side of the bed. Yes, I can tell that somebody's pushed your hot buttons. Uh, and so we get here and I get up and I am ah, going to bother shaving today because I just, <laughs> I don't know, I've given up. We are in... The 97th lockdown, I believe, if I'm keeping <laughs> keeping track here. And so as a result, I think the general mood is frustration out there. A yeah, fair level of anger, too. And anger. <clears throat> because, not sure who to be mad at. Well, that's all it. Mad. That's right. it. I mean, I don't know if I should be mad at everybody or nobody. Right. And that's part of the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Like if there's a clear villain, then it's easy to, to pick on somebody. But I think everybody has boxed this. Pretty much. That's my opinion. You know, you can write on the comments if you disagree. But I mean, the the federal government has, you know, we don't have vaccines. We don't, you know, we didn't close the borders, whatever. The provincial government isn't distributing. The municipal guys, they don't know what they're doing. So, I mean, I guess we got to be mad at everybody. Right. And when I talk to people on the phone and you do this constantly, you just got off the phone before you came in here. There's a huge level of frustration there, too. Yep. And I think a lot of it is, I don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, uncertainty creates more anxiety and stress than probably anything else that that you can think of. So that's probably why I'm in such a, you know, complete lack of control of your situation. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, so I get up this morning, you know what? Okay. We're just going to wing it. We're just going to wing it. We get to the studio here. We got our cue cards all ready to go. Really good topic that we were going to discuss. We'll do it again another day. So we just start flinging cue cards all over the room. And it's like, So let's get you going. Isn't there an accounting firm that's been doing this damn survey well, of there debt is. servicing. There is. And I think that's that's <laughs> kind of what's got me got me into this. But let's let's take this kind of piece by piece here. So there are two things that uh two questions that you and I get asked all the time. Right. And kind of one leads to the other. So the survey thing we're going to talk about. The first question though is Boy, uh, you guys must be really busy these days. <laughs> you just must be having a must be going crazy. Must, and I totally understand why we get asked that question because right, right now we are in another stay-at-home order. Right. So you and I are here in our Kitchener office with essentially nobody else. We got the protective <laughs> protective glass there. Right. Um, and you would think that if businesses are closed and have been closed for a year, we still know that debt is at all-time highs. As a result, presumably everybody's going bankrupt, and right. yet. That is not the case. It's not the case at all because uh, everyone may have all of that debt, but nobody is forcing them to pay. So CRA is still basically in the, we're going to call you, you owe us money. Oh, you can't deal with it. We'll call you again later. And that's two thirds of the people that file bankruptcy or a proposal owe CRA money. So if CRA is not pushing people, that's a a major release of pressure. And the other is that the the collectors and the courts are still all backed up. There's not a lot, lot of activity going on there. Yeah. And as a result, people don't need to go bankrupt. And so when they call us, my first question is, well, are you back to work yet? Right. And most people say, well, sort of, sort of, no, I've got part-time hours. I was back to work, but then the next lockdown started. And so now I'm not able to work and I don't know if and when I am going back to work. Right. And for all of those people, our advice has been, well, then let's just hold off. We know they're feeling stressed. They're feeling anxiety because they can't pay these bills. But frankly, it's more important to pay the rent of the mortgage. It's more important to get your groceries, look after your family, look after your personal community. And then when things start to settle down, get back to more and towards normal, uh, we can deal with this stuff. And that's the advice we're giving people. Yeah. And people appreciate that advice and they go, okay, well, you're not going to make any money on me if I don't file. No, we aren't. Not, Not today. But you're right. We would rather do the right thing than the fast thing. But it also means we are not giving them a complete total solution that can be implemented today. Right. We're saying, you know what, let's get the ducks in a row first and then we'll we'll do something. Yep. So people appreciate that, but that also adds to the the stress as <laughs> it, well. It does because the debt is still there. It's still hanging over your head. You know it's got to be dealt with. And you thought you did the right thing by calling the professional and the professional said, "Well, slow down. We're going to deal with some other things first." 
Yeah, it's like going to the doctor and the doctor says, well, we better run some tests first. No, I just want you to do surgery today. Well, that's not the way it works. We we got to run some tests. So, okay, that's yeah. that's where we're at. Use the dentist. It's a better example. You know you got to have a tooth pulled, but the dentist won't do anything because it's inflamed and infected. You got to deal with the infection first, make sure everything's stable, and then we'll deal with the bad tooth. We should have been doctors. We'd have, no, we'd have, I can't. Yeah. Can you just, no. <laughs> other, than, other than the illness part, we'd have been great at it. So you can't read my handwriting. Yeah, no, and I, I fainted the sight of Back blood to death. <laughs> so back to debt. So so that is the the environment we are in now right. that uh, no, we are not busy because there is no pressure or reduced pressure on no. people to do something. And unlike some of our competitors, we're deliberately not busy, though. And you just said it. We make sure we give people the right advice to deal with the problem as opposed to the right advice that will help us. It's not about help. Yeah, us. it would be very easy when people call us to say, you know what, why don't you go bankrupt? Yep, because then you can get it done. And that way, when you're back to work, it's it's all dealt with. But our worry there is, yeah, but bankruptcy has obligations associated with it. Yeah, there's a, and there's a stigma attached to it, and there's a and in, in a lot of cases, it's not really necessary. And even a consumer proposal, well, okay, there are payments you have to make in a proposal, and I agree with what you just said. Yep. It is better to be paying your rent and your groceries than the right. payments in the proposal. So, so the first question we get asked, boy, you guys are really busy. No, not no. right now. We did our year-end prediction show at the end of December, and I can't remember what we predicted. But we I'm predicted we didn't know what the hell. We I'm were sure doing. we were wrong. So, I mean, our current prediction is maybe things will start to get a little busier in the fall. Maybe, but we don't know. And it's frustrating because you you hear on the news. I mean, I don't watch the news, but you you hear that you know President Joe Biden has said that we're all going to be back having a Fourth of July barbecue. Sure, we are. And uh, you know, here in Canada, well, we're Canada, we're, we're nowhere near we're nowhere near that. So so that's part of the frustration. So that's kind of the setup for where we are now, which brings us then to the. The, the survey that oh. you mentioned. So let's talk about that. Give so, us the news. What did they say this week? So one of our competitors, and we're not going to mention them because you all know who they are. Why would we give them free publicity? Right. It uh, does a survey, and they release this pretty much every month. Yep. And we didn't do any show prep, so I can't actually quote exactly what the gist of the survey is, but it's something along the lines of, do you feel that you are within $200 of going bankrupt? Right. That's the gist of the survey. Now, they've been doing this survey for at least five years. You can go back yeah. and, and Google and, and see the historical uh, – The trend lines. The trend lines. And every time they've done this survey, the answer is always pretty much the same. Right. Somewhere around half of Canadians are within $200 of catastrophe. And it doesn't matter if we're in a pandemic or not. Right. The pandemic numbers are maybe a little higher than 50% and before maybe it was a little under, but it's basically the same numbers. Right. Half the Canadians feel pretty bad about their finances. Right. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, the let's talk about the, you know, conceptually here and then we can we can dig go a little deeper into it. So, and again, I haven't actually read the survey in detail because I don't think they actually publish it. Right. So I'm going on, you know, uninformed speculation here. <laughs> I don't believe the survey says Canadians automatically believe they're going bankrupt if they lose $200, right. but it says that they are very close. Mm -hmm. Is that even possible? So again, we haven't done any show prep here, but I right. want you to go into your memory banks. Well, and, we're numbers guys, so let's yeah. run some numbers. So how many people roughly went bankrupt or filed a consumer proposal in Canada last year in 2020? 100,000. Somewhere around 100,000. And if you think back to the biggest year ever, at the height of the credit crisis in 2008, 2009, we were somewhere around, what, 150,000, something yeah, like that? Yeah, I was going to say 145, 150 is a good guess. So we are yeah. actually at something like 20-year lows yeah. in terms of the number of people who are filing insolvency. Well, pre-pandemic, we were at 130,000 in 2019. So, And so it's dropped by a significant, you know, over 30% or roughly 30% right. since then. So, and again, why is that? Well, we just talked about that. That right. was the, the first question we answered. So not too surprising why that is why that is the case. Okay. You said we're numbers guys. Right. So we are going to engage in, you know, baseless speculation here, having done no <laughs> show prep whatsoever. How many people roughly are there in Canada, do you think? Oh, uh, 36 million, something like that, 34 million. People can fact check us and tell us what the actual and How many of them are adults? Yeah, how many of them are adults? So let's say there's maybe, I don't know, seven or eight million people who are under the age of 18. Maybe there's, and then obviously there are some people who are, I don't know, 90 years old yeah. and there's no chance they'll ever go bankrupt. But how many people potentially could 
theoretically file bankruptcy? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's twenty million. Yeah, it's a it's a round number. It's round easy number. To work with. And again, we're making it up. I don't right. know. I don't know what the number is. Okay, you're the math guy. I don't know if you can do this in your head or not, Ted. <laughs> but can you calculate what fifty percent of twenty million is? I think that would be ten million. Ten million. Look at that. See, we don't need to do. Sugar. And that's their prediction. That's what well, the survey is. The saying? survey says oh. that. Somewhere over 50% of Canadians believe that oh. they are within $200 of insolvency. Right. Okay, so put it all together for me then. 50% of 20 million is 10 million. Right. But you said the actual number of people who filed insolvency was 100,000 last year. So is that not 100 times different than reality? Yeah. <laughs> We're we're not even close here. And that's why this survey kind of kind of drives me crazy. Now, I am not criticizing our competitor. In fact, I give them credit. Why did they do this survey? Uh, it's a form of advertising. It's a form of advertising. They're trying right. to create news content. And it mm -hmm. worked because we're talking about it. Right. And everybody in the media, not everybody, but it, it gets quoted every every time they do it. Yep. And the headlines are never exactly what the survey perhaps said, right. it has to be a little bit more- uh, I got to put some spin on it. Got to put some spin yeah. on it. So the spin, it, it's not that you know Canadians feel that if they missed a paycheck, they might have a little bit of trouble. It's more like, oh boy, if I'm $200 away, $200 $200. away from going bankrupt, right. which clearly is, is ridiculous. That's mm -hmm. just, that's just clear. There will not be 10 million people filing a bankruptcy in the next you know six months or whatever, whatever that's indicating. Right. So am I criticizing the media? No, I'm not. Well, well. So am I? Am I criticizing our competitor? No, because yeah. they did exactly what they they wanted to do. Yep. They managed to get their name in in the paper, uh, and in the media. To run an advertisement on the radio or TV or whatever costs money. Mm -hmm. And when you hear an ad, you go, "Oh, that's an ad." Right. I'm being sold to. But when you read a news story, <laughs> it gives you credibility. Exactly. Depending on the source. Right. So, and you are much less likely to question the credibility of something that's in the news because, right. well, it's in the yeah. news. It was Ipsos Reid that did the survey. It was just these exactly. other guys just paid for it. It must be real. So it's it's clearly, clearly real. So I right. am not criticizing the media. The other reason I'm not criticizing the media is it's pretty hard to be a journalist today, a reporter. Well, there aren't any anymore, are there? They're just processing uh, well, that's, press releases. That's ultimately what it perhaps becomes. But I mean, you think back to when you were a boy in the 1920s, there, Ted. You know, and, and the the primary. I'm just gonna roll my metal hoop yeah, down the street now with a stick. The primary. I guess we are in the 20s, aren't we? So that was a bad, <laughs> bad number. So the primary uh, news was the newspapers, right? And there would be reporters who could spend a week or two investigating a story and writing a you know very robust piece, right? Because there were only a certain number of stories in the paper every day. Well, and the news cycle in those days was days long as opposed to hours long. Or seconds long. Right. So now a reporter has to not only write a story every day. Right. But they are all multi-platform. Yep. Multi-platform. So you look at a company like Global News, for example. And I happen to like Global News. They quote me all the time. Their website <laughs> is perfectly good. Right. But the reporter there has to do a story on the website. Yep. But they also have radio stations. They want to put an audio clip on the radio. Right. They've got TV stations. So let's have a clip on the evening news. Yep. And of course, they've all got, you know, social media accounts that they've got to be producing stuff for. So when they call me up to interview me, they say, hey, do you mind if we do this over Zoom or over Skype? Right. Because I want to record it, but I also want to get audio and video so that we can use it on these yeah, multi-platforms. Different forms of media. Yep. So that's pretty hard to be creating maybe five or 10 or 15 pieces of content every day. Well, and on top of that, the number of reporters doing that is dramatically reduced. Dramatically reduced. Well, right. we all remember, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago, uh, Bell Media right. torched like a hundred <laughs> frontline uh, reporters, journalists, hosts, right. and so on. And they their timing was great because it was like a week after Bell Let's Talk, you know, day. Yeah. And a lot of the people were very senior people. I'd been interviewed by many of them many times. Right. And it's like, wow, you know, now, now what are you going to do? So if I'm a reporter, I'm thinking, okay, my job is in jeopardy here. Mm -hmm. I better make sure I get some content out there. Right. And I better do it repeatedly. If I have a website and it's a free website, how does the company with the website make money? Right. How do you monetize it? Well, 
advertising. Mm -hmm. And how does advertising work? Well, based on clicks. Right. So I got to get clicks. I got to have people come to my site. So I've got to be controversial and current enough that they're going to want to see what I'm doing. So you have to enrage to engage. Oh, great. <laughs> I didn't make that up. I, yeah. I'm sure I stole it from somebody. Limbone's dead. You know but that, right? <laughs> I do know that. But that's, but that's exactly how it works, right? right. Yeah. If I want to get your attention and get you to click and to share it on social media, I've got to enrage you. Enrage to engage. That's the, the thing. Right. So I'm not going to write a story that says – you know, Canadians are feeling a little bit about unsure about the future and they're maybe going to cut back their spending a little bit. Right. I'm going to write a story or the headline writer is going to put a headline that says half of Canadians, Canadians are going to go bankrupt tomorrow. Right. So I'm not criticizing our competitor. They did a good job getting their name in the, the news and I'm not con uh, criticizing the media because they got to produce content. Right. So we're now we're back to we don't know who to be mad at. Is that where this is going? Well, <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> But I think – so the answer is we have to be conscious of what is out there so that we can understand what it is. So right. now think about this whole survey thing. And I guess the phrase pot calling the kettle black comes to mind. Well, it does because we've been releasing surveys now for what, 14 years? Yeah. <clears throat> well we – Ours have, is different. Yes. And, and how is ours different? Well, so ours isn't actually a survey. Ours is a study. Aha. Uh -huh. And there's a difference. So, and what we're referring to, what you're referring to yep. is the Hoyes Michaelis Joe Detter bankruptcy study. Right. And of course, we talk about it. You can go back to uh, a couple Google of months it. ago. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, uh, go to joedetter.ca. You can see the whole thing. Yep. So, what is that study? Well, so every year at the end of the year, we do an analysis of all of the persons that have filed with us in the previous year. And so it's an actual report of this is what happened last year. Right. A survey is here's what people are feeling. And depending on how you ask the questions, you can get dramatically ah, different results. You're right. Right. So ours is a study where we say, okay. This we, is what happened. Yeah, we added it up and this is how much debt people have and what yep. their income is and, and so on. So it's quite factually based. And we've been doing it long enough that we can show trend lines. So this is last year's, the year before, the year before that. It's You can see what's going on. But a survey, you're right, is based on how you ask the question as well. Right. So so let's think about that now. So I want to do a survey. And so I could ask the question in a neutral manner. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ted, can you uh, – what is your impression of how the government has handled the pandemic on a scale of 1 to 10? Right. Okay. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Five, six. I don't know. You know. Okay. But I could ask the question in a more leading way. Sure. So, uh, you know, Mr. Survey Respondent, let me give you some background. Um, Joe Biden, the president of the United States, has announced that all Americans will be able to go to a barbecue on the 4th of July because by then everyone will have received the second dose of their vaccine. Um, <laughs> we all know that the Toronto Blue Jays had their opening game in Texas and the stadium was full and, right. you know, everybody there can go to a restaurant and all the rest of it. Um, in Canada, we have a target that by the end of September, 75% of the people will receive their first dose. Right. How do you think – what is your rating of how the, the government has handled the pandemic? Uh, well, uh, pretty low, I guess. Yes, they're doing so much better south of the border. Yes. We must be screwing up here. Exactly. So I'm going to give it a two or a three. Right. Okay, let me ask the question a third way. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, we are in a worldwide pandemic that has caused, you know, many millions of deaths around the, the world. Uh, the Canadian government has been at the forefront of sourcing vaccines, funding vaccines. Uh, they've been very open. They have daily press conferences explaining what's going on. They've done a very good job in a difficult situation. How do you rank how they have done? Right. Well, when you put it that way, yeah, I guess it has been a pretty challenging case. I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10. Yep. So same question. You put a different preamble to it. Right. Because it's all about how you feel. Right. Right. And the same is for, so they've been doing this survey forever, but if you do it month to month again, so this is how people feel every month. So. Yeah. And, and is that not how you feel is kind of how you woke up this morning? Yeah. Well, and is the sun shining and is my, you know, is my kid yelling at me this morning for something? Is there like what's gone wrong so far to taint your view of the world? Well, and, and the sun shining has a massive impact on it. We can see it in the number of people who call our 310 plan helpline. Right. On a sunny day, like Easter weekend, which was the first weekend of April this year, I believe the weather was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And the week leading up to it was pretty good. 
<laughs> we had not that many people phoning us. Right. If you have a day where, you know, two or three days where it's raining and cold and lousy, there's more calls. There's more calls. We have more calls during lockdown than not in lockdown because people have got time on their hands. Right. And I'm worried about it. Doing. Um, yeah. We get emails at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Why? Well, because I can't sleep. Right. So your perception of reality is really impacted by by what's going on, which is not to say that a survey is useless. No, we wouldn't say it's useless. We wouldn't say it's useless. Well, <clears throat> it is what it is. It is showing how people feel at that point in time, right. given however you set them up to answer the question. Mm -hmm. A study, on the other hand, shows now, I guess you could criticize the study too by saying, well, it's showing retroactive information. True. All, studies are always going to be historical in nature. And that's, and that's the way it is. Okay, so what's my point? I don't know. We didn't do any show prep. And by the way, why does that camera keep moving? Have you noticed that? It seems it's, to, it's, inter it's distracting yeah, is what it, it is. It seems to keep going back and forth. Those of you who are not watching on YouTube will have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> my point is this. You have to do a little bit of critical thinking yeah. when you see something reported anywhere. And that goes for everything we produce too. Sure. Well, you always got to try and figure out what is the writers or whoever is presenting this to you, what's their bias? Yeah. And there is always a bias. Can't help it. I don't think people realize that a huge number of stories that get reported in the media have been pitched right. by somebody. Of course they have. And because because we do it ourselves. Well, and they, they yeah, and, and they're designed to evoke a response. I mean, hell, everybody's still talking about Donald Trump. The man's gone. Leave him alone. Let yep. him go away. Yep. But because there's still a demand for that. Yeah, I mean, it, I would think some of the American news networks have had a big drop in ratings because they don't have an enemy to be fighting against. Right. Ratings and revenue. Yep. Well, because you have to engage to you have to enrage to, to engage, engage. You see, and that's and that's the key. Key. So you got to understand. I am being manipulated, but again, we all do it. Right. You know, if if you want your kids to do something, well, you got to put a little bit of a spin on it. You know, to to get them because apparently you're not allowed to beat them. No, this is <laughs> this is not not been appropriate for many years now. So so. You got to understand, you're right, where it's coming from. So when right. you see a news story or when you are listening to a podcast mm -hmm. or when you're reading something on a website or you see something on Twitter, you got to say to yourself, okay, so where is this coming from? Right. That'd be my first question. And what are they trying to sell me? What are they trying to sell me? Right. Now, maybe it's something I want to buy. Nothing wrong with that. Right. But w what are they trying to sell me? And then can I do any kind of independent analysis or thought on this to see oh. if it makes sense or not. If you're going to talk about the news, don't ever restrict yourself to a single news source and don't pick the one that you're most comfortable with. Yep. Yeah. I think even particularly on something like Twitter, it's right. very important to follow people you completely disagree with. Right. As so you, well as people you agree with. You need to know what the other side is thinking. Right. <laughs> And I, you know, I deliberately try to do that reading a few different sources and it's always very interesting to see, hmm. So if, if I see the same story reported the same way in multiple different in, uh, outlets, then that's probably what happened. Right. So there was a tornado. Everybody reports there was a tornado. Everybody reports this is how many people lost their homes. Right. Okay. That, that's probably what happened then. Yep. But you, you know, your, your Donald Trump example, you got half the people, you know, greatest guy ever, half the people, most evil guy ever. Right. And, you know, I guess the truth is somewhere in the middle. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we don't care. We don't care because you're right. He's he's long gone. But yep. you want to see both both sides of it. Right. So what's the bias? But then the other part of it is, can I do any kind of analysis myself? So, OK, half the people are going bankrupt. Hmm. <laughs> it's not that hard to go to hoys.com, type in the word statistics. Right. And, and every out. single month we report how many people have filed for proposals and bankruptcies in Ontario. Those are government numbers. These not are government numbers. numbers. And you can go to the Office of yeah. the Superintendent of Bankruptcy website. It's all public. Yep. And you can see, wow, so 100,000 people last year, 10 million this year. Some, I'm missing something There's here. a disconnect. There's a disconnect here. And if you can train yourself to do that, okay, then I think you'll probably be a little bit less swayed by everything. Yep. Or maybe not. I don't know. Well, and <clears throat> let's add to this. I mean, the reason that they're flogging that like that is because it, it's a bankruptcy firm that's paid for the survey. And so their idea is to sell a bankruptcy, right? That's what they want to do. Uh, 
nobody should really be in the business of selling bankruptcies anyway. There's more than enough work out there for people, and there are enough folks that are in trouble that it's going to happen. Yeah, and we do our Joe Detter, Hoyt Michaelis bankruptcy study. Obviously, yes, it creates a media buzz, and you know we mm-hmm. go on TV and radio, and you and me and Scott Terrio are quoted all the time. Right. But we also do it because, well, I want to know what's going on. Right. Well, and we want to know who's been most affected and what the trends line. Right. I mean, it's always, you know, uh, single parents, women, right? With They have lower debt, but it's a bigger portion of their income. They likely have dependents. They likely have student debt. I mean, we'd like to track all of these things so we can see who are the folks that are being most impacted by debt problems. Right. So that we can then make sure we have solutions and are explaining the solutions that are applicable to those people. Correct. So- there's certainly self-interest on our part. We want to know what's going on. I mean, we've right. got a business to run here. Um, I mean, if we found out that everybody who goes bankrupt has gray hair or a shaggy beard because they're too lazy to <laughs> shave, then I guess we would be targeting more of what we do towards those people. So right. it's important for us to understand what's going on, but we also want to make sure we are explaining the solutions that are available in a manner that people who are in those situations can understand. Right, because the information is useless if people can't comprehend what you're talking about. And so we do the study to generate that kind of information for ourselves. And then, of course, well, since we've done the study- Make it available to the public. We make it available. And our study is made available. Right. Again, you can go to hoys.com and type in Joe Detter. You can go to joedetter.ca and you can actually see the whole thing. And it's still the only one of its kind. The government doesn't produce the kind of information that we provide. No, the the Office of the Superintendent of Bankruptcy does some kind of analysis that comes out about 10 months after ours does. Right. It's a little bit out of date by that point. And you're right. it's It's not exactly the same. So when you read that somebody has conducted a survey, okay, might be perfectly good. I would like to see the actual survey, please. Right. I would like to see the actual questions that were asked. How many questions were there? What was the confidence in the responses? So in most surveys, you know, let's say there's 100 questions, 15 or 20 of them are going to be repeats, rewordings of the questions just to see, can you be confident what the person said? We don't know any of that stuff because all we know is there's a survey saying that 50% of the people in Canada are $200 away from going bankrupt. Right. And and we have done surveys in the past. It's been a number of years, but we yep. have done them. And when we have done them, we have actually released, here's the questions that were asked and here's the responses. Right. So that the reader can form an informed opinion. So one of my messages to the media and I know you're all watching, is if you are reporting on a survey or a study, put a link to it. Right. So that, I mean, I understand you got to write an article and it's going to be a summary of what was there. But if you are pulling something from somewhere, give me the source. Don't make me go searching all around for it. If you want to enhance your credibility, provide more details. Right. And that way we can look at and see what was actually, what what the questions were. And we may go, you know what, this is very valuable. It's telling me something very good. Or it might be like, "Eh, okay, maybe it's it's of less value. Um, I mean, the other thing you will see in a story like that is they will, you know, report on the headline. Right. They will have a quote or two from the person who did this, the survey, and then they will often have a second quote from somebody else. Some sort of corroborating. Corroborating. And so <clears throat> that's where you and I and Scott Terrio get called all the time. <laughs> um, oh, this survey came out. Uh, would you like to comment on it, please? Well, I haven't read it, but sure, I'll comment on it. So yeah. I always like to say, yes, let me take a look at it, mm-hmm. and then I'd be happy to pr- provide my comments on it. And... Uh, so who is the corroborating person that's being, you know, being looked at? Um, it's very common in these situations where if it's a debt story, well, we'll get the person who did the survey and then we'll get someone from like a not-for-profit credit counseling agency or something. Right. Because, well, they're not-for-profit. They, they must be honest. They must be honest and, and pure, which I assume they are. I'm not, again, I'm not saying anything, <laughs> anything to the contrary. Now, are they experts in the legal aspects of a consumer proposal and a bankruptcy? Well, if you're not a licensed insolvency trustee, probably Probably not. not. But so again, who are the sources? Who's being quoted? Can you do some some thinking on it? So if you do that, I think you get a a much better perspective on it. And this isn't just debt stories. Right. This is any story. This is everything. So so there you go. Okay. Feel any better? I think I feel a bit better now. Um, (laughs) 
I think I probably will go home and shave or something. I'm not sure what any of our listeners are going to yeah, feel they're, about it. They're all going, okay, guys, like next week, can you like do some prep? <laughs> you're the, off the deep end. Yeah, you've gone totally <laughs> lunatic. So, okay, so next week we will go back to our normal format. We will actually, you know, put some some prep some into cards it. cards together. Put some cards yeah. together and, and do it that way. But, um, you know, I thought it was be, because I got so many people who contacted me and said, and these are people who, you know, understand this or have right. a, a vague understanding is, boy, you guys must be really busy because half the Canadians are going to be going bankrupt. So right. I thought, okay, let me explain it. Then we all know. <sighs> okay. There you go. I feel better now. Well, good. The uh, Anything else you'd like to add in closing? No, I think we're just fine. That's I a good, think, good place to add I it. think we've done it. <laughs> well, so, so there we are. Ted, thank you for uh, being the sounding board while I ranted for however long that took. There you I go. feel better. Hopefully our listeners do too. Um, again, information on everything we mentioned today is over at hoys.com. If you want to see the Joe Detter study we do or anything else we, we produce, right. it's all there. Um, it's all open. It's all free. You don't have to, it's, it's all there. So we make it available. So right. Ted, thank you very much. And thank you to all of you for listening to me rant. I appreciate this, this therapy session you've allowed me to engage in. Um, that is our show for today for Ted Michaelis. I'm Doug Hoys until next week. That was debt free in 30. It will probably be canceled and never be on the air again. 